Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, so I'm here to talk about the SCAB V2 data collection prototype, which is OCA's newest project, and we're very excited to, to have that going on. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, for those who have not heard of it, uh, the SCAP, which is the Security Content Automation Protocol, uh, is a security uh, standard suite to support automated ent enterprise security assessment. And that covers a number of use cases, such as vulnerability management, configuration management, patch management, that sort of thing. Uh, SCAP itself is, is what I would term a super standard. It defines how other standards are supposed to work together in order to create uh, this security automation solution. SCAP itself is a NIST standard, uh, 800-126 special publication. Uh, the component standards, however, that SCAP references come from a wide range of places, and that's one of the powers of SCAP. It utilizes standards from a number of sources uh, to try to create a combined solution that meets people's needs. Uh, SCAP has been around for a while. It was first published in 2006, and it remains a going concern. Uh, the latest update uh, came out uh, in February of 2018. Uh, next slide, please. So that brings us to our current effort, and that is the SCAP V2 effort. That kicked off a couple of years ago, uh, and it's an effort to, to do a more significant uh, revision of the SCAP standards. So some of the key goals that we're trying to get in the SCAP V2 work are uh, better support of continuous monitoring of enterprise assets rather than the point in time assessment that SCAP version one uh, is, is primarily known for. Another key thing that we're trying to work on is getting tools to talk to each other, inter inter or interoperable architectural elements within this data collection architecture. That should sound very familiar to, to OCA uh, participants and uh, and those interested in that sort of work. Uh, so we're trying to get that architectural interoperability, not just data interoperability, which was the SCAP v1 uh, focus. And then finally, we're we're also trying to uh, expand the scope. So SCAP v1 was very much focused on traditional endpoints, laptops, servers, uh, that sort of thing. And we're trying to ensure that SCAP v2 from the outset uh, considers all sorts of uh, assets that an enterprise may be using operationally. These include mobile assets, IoT assets, cloud assets, and be able to pull all that information into a unified understanding of their security posture and security risk. Um, so it's, it's these sorts of things, these expansions require more than just sort of data interoperability. They require an architecture, a, a, a interoperable components uh, in order to achieve them. And that brings us to the work that we're doing uh, in the data collection sub-team within the SCAP community, and that is the data collection architecture. So next slide. So this slide shows a very high level overview of the components, um, not too much there, but the important thing to understand is that these are roles, not necessarily individual software pieces. We want to be able to actually support a wide range of different vendor decisions to merge or separate components. But the important thing is that we've got these interoperable interfaces between each of these uh, elements here. And that allows us to compose and extend a data collection architecture that's capable of meeting a wide range of needs. Another key element of that is that these, at the very bottom of the screen, if you see the posture collection engine, these PCEs, these are not standardized elements uh, by SCAP. They are, and that is intended to allow what people have already deployed, what vendors have already built to integrate into the SCAP architecture system without forcing everyone to replace all of their old tools and vendors to completely recode their old products. We want to be as inclusive as possible to the wide range of solutions that people are already deploying. So that's the very high level uh, goal of the architecture. If we go into the next slide, this just provides a little more detail uh, as to each of those roles, the user application. That's basically the, in, the entry point into trying to invoke a data collection. We've got a repository for persistent storage, so you can get previous results uh, without having to go back and ping all of your endpoints and get the information again if it hasn't changed. Uh, we've got collectors, which are interfaces to those custom data collection points, the posture collection engines. Uh, and manage that part of the collection. The 
posture collection engine or PCE. That's what's actually pulling data from systems. Uh, it's not standardized in the architecture. We want to basically be able to utilize whatever tools are already out there. Uh, we've also got these posture collection extensions so that we can add collection capabilities. And then a manager, which sort of serves as the overall orchestrator for this capability, uh, taking a request from the user application and figuring out which endpoints need to be assessed and what tools need to be used in order to do that. So allowing a, a general question to be asked by the user application and turn it into specific actions that answer the, the user application's question. And again, we're, we want to be very flexible in how software actually implements these components. We're not dictating that, oh, you have to have a separate uh, collector software application and a separate uh, repository op, uh, application. We want to support a wide range of ways to do this. The key thing is that we've got these standardized interfaces so that we can plug in different pieces as we need. So if we go into the next slide, that brings us to the data collection architecture prototype. So within the SCAP community, which I mentioned is uh, SCAP v2 community, which has been going on for about two years now, it's an open public community. Uh, there has been a group that has been focusing on the data collection, the architectural uh, area. We've got a high level draft standard. And now the next step is we want to test it out. We want to figure out do some of the ideas work? And also we want to answer some of the open questions we have. We don't have all the details of this architecture uh, decided yet. So the goal was let's create a prototype. It will allow us to experiment with uh, design choices and validate approaches that we identify on the whiteboard as good approaches. The other thing that does is as we continue to flesh out the prototype, then eventually we're going to end up with an implementation that's going to become the SCAP v2 standard published by NIST. And that uh, implementation can then serve as a reference implementation, which is especially important in this broad architectural standard because not all vendors are going to implement all pieces. So we need something that they can test their components of the architecture against. Having a fully fleshed out proof of concept implementation uh, will allow them to test pieces of this without having to implement the entire architecture. So where are we right now? Currently, we've got a very uh, a skeleton code built with dummy messages passing according to the intended message flows. We are iteratively implementing different pieces in more and more detail to test out the concepts, which then feed back into the SCAP community, the data uh, collection subteam uh, of the SCAP community, and they use it to uh, revise their the standards that they're working on. By bringing this to OCA, we're hoping that uh, we're gonna be able to get more eyes on the design and more hands on the code, uh, get some more uh, insight into what constant, you know, where are the ideas, uh, the designs working, where are they not? Uh, we're very much hoping to get feedback on this. Nothing that we're that we're putting together is, is written in stone at all. Um, but we're also hoping to up-level, uh, increase the awareness of SCAP and the work that we're doing there uh, to the OCA community. Which brings me to my final slide, which is the SCAP v2 standardization effort. Again, uh, SCAP itself is a NIST effort and NIST has a uh, frequently asked questions page and some other information uh, specifically focused on SCAP v2. But we have a uh, public uh, SCAP community. Uh, it's got several subgroups, including the data collection subteam, which is the source of the uh, high level architecture design that we are implementing right now. Uh, people who are interested in uh, providing feedback uh, or learning more about SCAP, I encourage you to uh, use these groups uh, and, and look at these resources. And I also uh, want to mention that next week, uh, SCAP will be having a public workshop. And there's a registration information for that as well. So if you're interested in this, uh, uh, current, I encourage you to uh, get more information about SCAP. Uh, in the meantime, we're excited to have this project uh, working in OCA and look forward to working with the OCA community. So thank you very much.